Hello there. So in this last video, we're going to revisit how to do this blob. So previously I showed you how to do this outside the bubble of Fluent and everything. And now let's revisit how to do it inside Fluent. Okay. The idea is pretty much the same. Okay. So to do this one in the cases, let me show you. So you have the Fluent mesh cases. Now the, the cases is standalone Fluent. And now you go here into Turbulent and you go into YP1 and see here that you have a solution here. You have case post. Here we already have the, 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 all the, uh, uh, case, uh, the case set up to do the post processing. So let's open this case. So I already have Fluent here. I will open. We have the solution, everything. This is the one we, we have. And here we, do, we have all those user defined uh fields already created so everything pretty much is standard here not going to address anything there so let me go here plot here okay so here you have the solution and everything and if i go here in plots see here that i have different plots okay so see that in this one we have u plus y plus this is the one in that we're interested and in. See that usually, so let me go back here. When you see that you have this one, it's the validation data. You go there, select everything there, and you plot and you have the different. So this this one corresponds to a solution coming from another software, different physics. But you see that you should always recast that. Then you have the analytical one. So just to, I think I already addressed this one, but when you see this one here is that you are already in the, in the mean flow. Okay. You are outside of the boundary layer, you reach the mean flow. And in our case, we have this one, the dubs. And when it goes down like this, remember that you have the upper wall. So when you start to see this one is that this is the effect of the upper wall will be something equivalent to the mean flow. So these plots will change a little bit according to that is you have pipe flows or external flow, flat plate flows. Okay. You, you, you may have this influence, but pretty much see that the logarithmic, the, the logarithmic region is pretty much the same, but this effect when it goes down is due to the top wall. So if you want to see this one, you can limit the sampling. In my case, I'm sampling from top to bottom. You just can sample from the wall to the mid section of the pipe. It's up to you. Okay. So if you sample up to the mid section, it will stop something like here. So how to do this one here. So just to show you the rest of the plots So now that you have access to white plus, so you can put like touring kinetic energy. Remember that. It's very energetic here. The boundary layer in TK is produced there in the, where you have a strong viscous effect. Okay. Then you dissipation also. Okay. It, everything is dissipated close to, to, to the viscous layer in the buffer layer. Okay. Then you put here this blood. Okay. This is the shear laminar, the shear turbulent here also. Then you have the total here and this one will correspond to the velocity here in function of y plus units you can go here in data sources and also you can add this one and let me put this tree which correspond to shear and see that you have this plot here so as you check remember if you check this one with the two to the case you, you see that there are slight differences but pr pretty much remember the 2d flows are very energetic okay so you will have different peaks, different, <clears throat> different minimum and maximum, but pretty much the, the, the behavior is the same. And this strange things that you see here, remember also the two, two D mesh was, was a perfect one. This is a tether mesh. So this is the influence of the mesh quality. So see the importance of mesh quality and type of elements that, that you're using. So if you have something finer, probably you're going to get a straight line here, like in the, to the case, but pretty much we, we have the behavior that we know that we should reproduce. So how do we do this, this plots and compute these quantities? Because we don't have these quantities by default in fluent. So remember you go here in parameter customization and you have custom fill functions. And here's where you compute those quantities. So let me go here, right click manage. And if I open this one, just to probably sound like a broken record on this, but just to remind you how to compute this. So you sample, 
shear stress here. And then in this line, normal to this point, you sample velocity. But what is important that now the, the distance from the wall to the flow should be measured from this point. So this point should become zero, zero, zero. And then you measure distance from here to here. So you have to be careful that here, see that we have this custom field that we compute the height. So I know my Y here minus the radius and you compute, I compute that height. Then to compute the Y plus, you have it here, you access the function density. Okay, this is shear velocity, height, because laminar viscosity, U plus, velocity magnitude, and shear velocity. Everything you are going to plot it in the line that you choose. When you choose your surface, you plot that line there. Okay, you plot that. And then we moved, for instance, shear laminar, strain rate times viscosity, strain rate times turbulent viscosity, and the total shear, this is one, total shear plus laminar shear. Shear velocity, square root of wall shear stress divided density, okay? So you put it here in the wall, divided density, so you are going to have this quantity at the wall, okay? So how do we do this? So you see, easy piece. So now that you have this, you can access the old fields here, and then remember, these are custom fields, and you just choose there. So let's revisit this one to redo it here. So if you want to add a new one, new, and I will call, let's do the height. So if you want to do the height, so see that the height, remember, is the actual value. Remember that is a positive quantity. Just, again, let me stress, it is a positive, if you put that one in a logarithmic, a negative quantity in a logarithmic, you know, that we're going to get an error. So it's positive quantity, and also starting from the point where you sample the shear stress, you go, from there up to the core of the flow. So you go here, you have axle here, parenthesis. To access that di the, the, the distance or coordinates here, you have any mesh. See that X, Y, so I want to access this one. Select minus 0 0.05, close parenthesis, and give it a name, I will call it height two, and you have it there. So now we can do some plotting. Okay, so see that, let me go here. So this is the original height, and now height two, the one that we just computed, pretty much the same, okay. So now let's do another one. So let's do now the y, the y plus value. So just to remind you, y plus value Okay, so as I go back to the to the equation Let me here. See that you require shear velocity. So we need to compute the shear velocity. So the shear velocity is you go into your directory here, you see that already have it here, U shear. So as you open this one, you already have the here the shear velocity at the wall. So to do this one, I, gu I guess you know how to do it. You have a line here. So in my case, I use, I know it's line 10, the one that I'm using for my sample. Okay, it's located here in 6.9. And in that line, I'm doing my sampling, okay? So I have the wall shear, so shear velocity, let me go back here and manage. So see, shear velocity equal to a square root of wall shear divided density. So let's do it again here. Square root and wall fluxes, select, divided, density, close parenthesis, and I call it SB2. Okay, let me call it like this. Okay, and if I go here, you should have the two quantities. That These quantities are plot at the wall, so it's not in the, plot, in the plane. If you put it at the wall here, you will see better those quantities here. See here that it changes the wall shear depends on the wall shear stresses, and we know that wall shear stresses are different. You can plot the wall shear stress, and you will see that. Okay, so you have here your wall shear stress. So now, now that we have that quantity, okay, that pretty much you, you check the previous one shear velocity one with the one that we just computed, they are the same values. 
okay we can do a sampling in a line this line okay so let me go here and let me do it here in the last one okay so you have here white plus so let, let me do a new one new and i will do it like this that i want to sample custom fields and this one okay line 10 and see that you have it here okay your shear velocity here everything zero on this point okay so probably now here i need to change it like this probably we understand better than this so this is the wall the value and what you do save this one right let me call it test okay so as you go back here see that you should have test what is the da, 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 right okay it was saving in validation data so let me go back one okay so see that you have it here, test. So if you enter validation data, you have it there. So if you open test, see that you have the value. So this is the value that you need. This is your shear velocity at the wall. Okay. So now when you compute the other quantities, like if you go manage here, see that white plus that it has shear velocity. This is the value that we're in, in, inserting there. So let me do it again. Manage, uh, sorry, new. So always remember this definition, very important. Never forget this. So, okay, so we know this, we know this one. We just output this and we have this one also in the mesh information. So let's compute it. So it will be, okay, so first we have density. Okay, sled times custom function, shear velocity. Okay, it's not, oh, okay, I, I, careful. It's not shear velocity that you need to, you need to put this one, okay? Because shear velocity will get the whole field. So you need to put this exact value that you have there that you sample 0 0.047, okay? So it's, it's, you put the shear velocity there, you're going to see different results. For one, okay, let me close here, why? Okay. This is times the pop -um. we have here. So remember that Y now is the height. It's not the coordinate, it's the height that you have corrected because remember you start from zero, zero here. So you have corrected that height. So let's divide, okay, by molecular viscosity. should be properties here and you call it and let me call it yp2 okay we have it there and now we can compute again a new one called the u plus okay the other one is u plus is this one velocity sample in this line divided the shear velocity so you go is velocity is velocity magnitude so that divided this quantity here 0.047 so the, this is a little bit annoying when you have to put it like this but also you, you can parameterize this here you have some auction manager I not go into the top so probably make a mistake there it's 4 7 5 8 for one and I call it UP2 compute and we're done so if I go on the, go here new plot disable this one and the X axis I want custom fields I want Y plus two and it, no Y axis I want U plus two X axis Okay, along this line. So see that you select this one and you're doing that sampling. Okay, and this is what you have. And now what you need to do is axis, x is logarithmic, 
look at if it and you have this so see that let, let me change here from this to this so see that when it goes down here basically it's the this one you reach here and you're seeing the influence of the other wall so you are outside that influence so you said probably would be better to plot up to the middle that will be like 2500 yes in y plus there so let's do it so change this one a key and out to range from 0 to 2500 okay zero log logarithmic zero doesn't exist so put a small value there and you have it there so see that now you have it there and probably you can put a much smaller value there so one and you can increase this one to three thousand maybe oops three thousand see that just start to go down and now we can load the other data from for validation i don't need this one i need just in that one and see that we have this pretty much a very good agreement so this is how you do it inside fluent so as you see maybe it, it is better i like to do it outside outside fluent using python Matlab or whatever you want to use so this these steps and again, I repeat it, I want to say, I thought it was that like a broken record, but it's this sample, shear stress here, then line normal to this point, sample velocity, and that's all the information that you need, okay? And also about the coordinates, but then you just correct those coordinates, that's not a big deal. And then just compute these three quantities, and with these three quantities, you reproduce this plot. This plot, as I mentioned, is fundamental. This is the basis in turbulence modeling. So whatever case that you are doing, is you manage to reproduce this one, you are you know that you are in the good track. There are a few sections that we're going to see later, but let's say that most of the time you should you should reproduce the viscous layer up to, let's say, this blending here. And then sometimes the panels, you have pressure gradients, like burst pressure gradients, this this logarithm layer this one might separate so you have might have something like this going towards the laminar now due to separation and if you have roughness as well this one can go below this line here the log, the log low so it must can go below here there so that is something that we're going to address later and so next bounds lecture but this is the basis so i think at this point we we have addressed a lot so you see very simple case but we have addressed the basis the fundamental of turbulence modeling so try to whatever case you do try to follow these guidelines that we have done in these two cases in 2d and 3d and i'm pretty sure that you are in the good track also important look at that 2D cases are much, much energetic than 3D. So as you compare these solutions, the 2D and 3D, you will see that there are differences, but the fact is just because the 2D cases are much, much energetic. You don't have the vortex stretching. So in reality, the 2D solutions, they are not the, they, they, they are not, they are not, they, they are not accurate. They are not following with the reality. Okay, the real ones are the, are the 3D results. 3D is you want to resolve wall sense, you need to put a lot of cells in all the directions, dimensions, and we have seen that how to compute do, those values now in the in the turbulence estimates now from the integral scales to the Taylor's micro scales to the Kolmogorov scales. Okay, so that's all. I hope uh, you enjoyed, and now we're going to move from now on to more practical stuff. Okay, a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. See you next videos. Bye.